so I've had lots of requests to ask um, how this is built. So I'm actually going to disassemble this now. So I'm going to show you how the cylinders are put together and how the Dobson's blocks work. Okay, so first we're going to have a look at the Dobson's block, which is this, this bit here. This was actually the hardest bit to construct. This controls, this controls the two inlet valves. So you can see it snaps them shut at the right time. Okay, so this has got two little poles or catches in there. The valves are pulled by two small elastic bands. They're the only non-Lego bits in the whole build. And this little roof section there, when th this actually pulls the poles back, they drop into the hole and as it moves this way, that roof section pushes these up and the valve springs back. Right, I'll just show you a few more details about the Dobson's block. I've now disconnected it from the engine. So how, how it works, there's the little uh, stop or pole dropped in there. If I, if I pull on that now, that's not going anywhere, okay? As this slides across, it just releases it, okay? And then when it comes back, the stop drops and pulls the valve along and then releases it again. So how did I uh, do that? The answer is with, with great difficulty, this was by far the the most difficult bit of, of the design of the whole engine. So let's just have a look at it. I wanted to make it as, as narrow as, as I possibly could and as short as I possibly could because the length determined the length of the cylinder. And quite frankly, the model was big enough uh, as it stands. So, um, so I had to use some bizarre construction techniques really to get um, everything aligned, um, this sliding um, in there correctly, um, the the the, um, the end of 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 the valve um, slider needed to to fit precisely between between here, and there needed to be something to pop to pop this up, which I've used this roofing piece here. Um, and then the construction of, of this, um, there had to be enough height here to, to stop this jumping out when the, the valve released. Um, and also, I'll just show you this. So that's just a piece that sort of sits in the side there. Um, these are important as well because these stop things jumping out. So these play two roles. The, they reverse the direction of the studs on the blocks here and they provide a little sort of buffer at the side to stop these popping out. So um, so that's it really. Uh, you can see, see what I've done there. Um, on the face of it, it doesn't look very complicated. I found it incredibly complica complicated. The, uh, the Lego whizzes out there can probably make a better job, but I couldn't think of anything else. Now to the valve chamber itself, you've got the piston here, which is also connected by one long axle to the piston in the other cylinder. Each cylinder has got four valves, two inlets and two exhausts. Um, obviously the inlets aren't working in that one now. The inlets and the exhaust in this one are actually connected together as per the original Trencherfield mill engine. And I'll now just disassemble one cylinder so you can see what's underneath. You 
going to piss them off. Okay. <clears throat> So I made this little panel here just with tiles to give the smooth running area for the, for the piston. Um, also, you'll note the um, inside of the cylinder head I've made um, with a, a plate facing downwards and tiled that to correspond to the, the running area for the, for the piston. Now underneath, You've got the air pipe, um, which comes up underneath all four cylinders. Okay, um, that comes from the, the vacuum all the way underneath for the four cylinders. And then we've got um, two parts to the chamber. There's the inlet part and the exhaust part, which exhausts through a little hole in the side of the, of the um, cylinder here. So when the the vacuum is on, the inlet valves open, that sucks air through the inlet valve and sucks the piston this way. And uh, at the same time, the, the exhaust valve at this side opens and allows air to enter from outside through this part of the chamber, through here, and to fill uh, this side of the piston. And then when it gets to um, top dead center here, uh, this valve closes, this valve opens and sucks the piston back this way. And that's essentially all there is to it. The, the most difficult part, as I say, was getting the Dobson's block working, the travel on, on here so that these pop out at the right time. Um, and the timing of all the valves with the, um, with the eccentrics here effectively. So that's it. It's, it uses a lot of parts. It's difficult to set up and align because you get some misalignment between the two cylinders here sometimes and things get a bit tight. But other than that, there's, there's nothing difficult to it. If you decide to uh, build something similar, I wish you all the best of luck and please ask me if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching.